Today's topic is introduction to neuroanatomy. Before going to study about neuroanatomy, if you learn some basic things regarding nervous system, it will help you to understand the concept properly. Right? That's what in this session I will try to give some very basics like A B C D of neuroanatomy. Clear? Now, what is nervous system? Nervous system is nothing but it is controlling and coordinating system of the body it is controlling and coordinating system of body right and what are the functions of it of course it controls total body right and how it will control it takes the sensory information from the environment and from the body it interprets and it will process then it will give motor impulses appropriated to that sensory input right so let me explain that first it will take the sensation from the environment and from the body that information actually it is sensory information it will passes through the sensory pathway and reaches to the brain within the brain there will be interpretation or integration or processing will takes place once it processed brain will decide what it should do right so then according to that brain will give motor output and after giving it will not keep quiet it will control that motor output also right so in this way brain will works of course not only this many functions are there like memory concentration attention behavior okay all those things are there okay but now how it works it takes the sensation interprets initiates the motor impulses and controls the motor impulses clear <coughs> right let me explain with one example how it works my central nervous system i am giving lecture here and one student came there and asking that may i come in right when i am giving lecture at the time that sound produced by him that sound will reaches to my ear and that sensory information passes through the auditory tract and reaches to the cortex that means higher center then interpretation will take place right that means processing will take place after processing my brain will give some motor output that motor output will contracts my neck muscles and also muscles which are necessary for the turning of my body right so that because of that motor output i will turn and i will look at you right so this is one set of receiving sensory information and producing motor output i have received the sensory information and my brain given output also right after that one more set of uh, sensory and motor will starts how when i look at him right that information that visual information passes through the optic tract and reaches to the brain once it reaches brain it will interpret it and compare with past memory and it will give motor impulses if there is any past memory about him my brain will give motor impulses according to that memory right so he must be student of mine right my brain must be interpreted and recognized and it will give motor impulses and because of that motor impulses i will say please come in right so like this central nervous system will works clear right now what are the subdivisions of nervous system 
nervous system nervous system divides into central nervous system and peripheral nervous system central nervous system cns and pns right okay let me draw a diagram so this is central nervous system this is cerebrum and here pons and medulla oblongata of course midbrain will be present within it that i can draw i cannot draw here we can form what is another structure here yes here is the cerebellum now this is medulla oblongata medulla oblongata continues as a spinal cord clear right right so this is brain along with spinal cord so brain and spinal cord includes central nervous system of course uh, there will be central sulcus precentral sulcus here temporal sulcus brain will be like this clear so this is central nervous system right then brain and spinal cord is central nervous system and the nerves which are coming out of the central nervous system those are peripheral nervous system right clear okay let me explain that i will take section of brain and i will try to explain peripheral nervous system right so this is section of spinal cord okay let me draw this over here this is anterior median sulcus this is posterior median septum and you can find gray matter within it surrounding the gray matter you can form white matter so this is section of spinal cord right now sensory information will pass through the spinal cord and reaches to the brain in brain there will be interpretation and sending the motor impulses through the brain and spinal cord and out will output will comes out through the peripheral nerves okay right see here 
let me explain uh, about section of uh, spinal cord in very brief this is gray matter and this is central canal within the center there you can form central canal and surrounded by gray matter gray matter surrounded by white matter gray matter is nothing but collection of cell bodies collection of cell bodies white matter is nothing but collection of nerve fibers why they are white because of myelin sheath clear right now i will draw structure of spinal nerve so that it will be easy to understand the concept of what is sensory what is motor how they works okay so here this is posterior horn from posterior horn posterior root will arise okay so this is posterior root in posterior root we can found one enlargement this enlargement what we call dorsal root ganglion or sensory ganglion dorsal root ganglion or sensory ganglion from the anterior horn anterior root will arise this is anterior root so this is anterior root clear now posterior root and anterior root both will unite and forms spinal nerve within the intervertebral foramen within the intervertebral foramen there will be formation of spinal nerve so this spinal nerve comes out from the intervertebral foramen and divides into anterior primary rami and posterior primary rami right anterior primary rami and posterior primary rami so here this is posterior primary rami and this is anterior primary rami right of course you must be aware of it posterior primary rami will supply to the posterior part of the body right anterior primary rami will supply to the anterior part of the body okay but in case of cervical region and lumbar and sacral region there will be formation of there will be formation of plexus by anterior primary rami only so posterior primary rami will not form any plexus in case of cervical region he can form brachial plexus of course some contribution will be there from the uh, thoracic segment also okay lumbar region and sacral region we can found plexus right in the cervical region also we can found cervical plexus clear so what i am trying to say there will be anterior primary rami and posterior primary rami right so this is spinal nerve up to here okay now this is spinal nerve now i will try to explain how sensory information will come from the environment and how it will reach us to the brain clear okay now we will take any one information any one sensation either touch pain temperature okay or any other sensations okay what we will take we will take cold temperature or hot temperature otherwise pain temperature will take okay so i am beating over here on my hand right so this when i am beating over here there will be pain is producing here who will take that pain that pain will be received by receptors first or any sensation if it is pain free nerve endings will takes the pain impulses if it is pressure if i am pressing over here pessenian carp cells will takes that or pessenian carp cells will receives that information 
okay if it is cold crosses receptors will takes that information if it is hot roughness and organs they takes the information right if it is touch means nerve corpuscles and merkel's disc they takes the information okay whatever any sensation there will be some receptors will be there to receive that information okay uh, now if you take skin over here just imagine this is skin from this skin okay i am beating over here so pain is producing here so that here some free nerve endings will be there this free nerve endings will stimulate or receives this information and they are ready to give they are ready to give to the central nervous system but who will take that to take that information some other person that means some other structure should be there so what is that structure to take the sensory information now this dorsal root ganglion will come into picture right so within the dorsal root ganglion within the dorsal root ganglion we can found pseudo unipolar cells pseudo unipolar cells actually these cells are larger cells because of that they will not get sufficient nutrition that's what these cells are surrounded by satellite cells and fibroblast cells and forms capsule of course that we will tell you in the histology okay so these are pseudo unipolar cells these pseudo unipolar cells first it gives only one process this is one process only first they give and because it is pseudo it is not real unipolar once it passes some distance it divides into two processes it divides into two processes one process which is going towards the periphery and another process it is coming towards the central nervous system right the process which is going towards the periphery this process what we call peripheral process peripheral process and the process which is passing into the central nervous system this nerve or this fiber or this process what we call central process this is central process and this is peripheral process right i hope now you understood here this pain sensation received by the free nerve endings given to the peripheral process once it reaches to the peripheral process it will be conveys or it will be carry that information and reaches to the dorsal root ganglion from dorsal root ganglion this information will be passed through the central process and it will terminate or it will synapse over the dorsal horn cells actually this is dorsal horn and this is ventral horn within the dorsal horn some cells will be there some neurons will be there those neurons what we call dorsal horn cells and cells which are present in the anterior horn those cells what we call anterior horn cells right so now it has been terminated or it has been end in the dorsal horn by synapsing with dorsal horn cell right so now this information given to the dorsal horn cell now this pain information carried by the another neuron this is one neuron this is first neuron and this is second neuron so 
usually what we call this is first order neuron and this is second order neuron so that that information reached here okay and from here second order neuron starts passes through the spinal cord brain stem and reaches to the structure which is present here there will be thalamus will be present that just imagine it will be somewhere here in the base of the brain okay so or uh, it is part of diencephalon that i will tell you in the next step don't worry so once it reaches to the thalamus in the thalamus there will be third order neurons will start actually this is second order neuron this is first order neuron third order neurons will start from the thalamus from there this information will reaches to the brain that means cerebral cortex sensory cortex right once it reaches to the sensory cortex that information will be interpreted how that pain came somewhere we have beaten with this uh, markers that's what pain came that brain will interpret okay and according to that motor impulses will be produced clear if you are clear up to sensory input then i will go for motor output are you clear i think i hope you understood okay anyway let me explain one more time this is skin here pain produced and that pain is received by the free nerve endings these are receptors that information carried through the peripheral process of dorsal root ganglion and that dorsal root ganglion given the same information or it is taking the same information towards the central nervous system by central process and this central process gives the pain impulses or pain sensation to the second order neurons which are present in the dorsal horns right so these second order neurons will go upwards as a ascending tracks as a ascending tracks actually i am giving very uh, basic and schematic diagram actually some of the fibers they cross the opposite side then ascend okay that i will tell you in the tracks don't worry about this at this session right okay so these fibers they ascends up okay and reaches to the brain okay imagine this is brain and here septum pellucidum here third ventricle on either side of third ventricle you can find thalamus this second order neurons will terminate in the thalamus right from the thalamus third order neurons will start and reaches to the cortex okay this is a rough diagram don't worry about it now first order neuron second order neuron and third order neuron in this way sensations will reaches to the brain clear now brain will interpret this information brain will interpret this information and it will send motor impulses okay so what are that motor impulses i am beating over here right and because of this beating pain initiated so that pain reached to the brain my brain will send motor impulses either removal of this hand from this marker that means extinction of my elbow joint that means contraction of my triceps right otherwise inhibition of this hand muscles right so this is the motor output 
but how they will come i am telling that motor output will come and it will inhibits the action of this hand and there will be extension of my elbow but how that will come that means what is the route that i will tell you here see here this information reach to the brain brain will interpret and sends motor impulses these motor impulses will comes down they will come down from the brain that means motor cortex and passes through the internal capsule and enters into what is this brain stem then it enters into spinal cord these fibers actually these are pyramidal tract fibers okay i will tell you in the spinal cord once they reaches here that means appropriate segment they will terminate they will terminate or they will end in the anterior horn they will terminate in the anterior horn actually pyramidal tract will 80% of the pyramidal tract fibers will crosses in the middle of lungata remaining 20% they will cross at the level of appropriate segments that means when it reaches here they will go to opposite side okay because uh, now if i tell all these things you will be confused that's what just i am giving schematic diagram right so here once they terminated in the anterior horn cells here this information this motor information will received by the cells which are present in the anterior horn cells which are present in the anterior horn so this information will pass through the anterior root it will pass through the anterior root then spinal nerve and reaches to the effector organ reaches to effector organ okay otherwise let me draw with a different color this is motor root right and reach to the muscle right so this is motor and this is sensory okay i hope you understood now what is motor what is sensory how they will go and how they will come clear and one more thing you have to remember here i have drawn sensory in the posterior primary ramai hand posterior root and posterior horns and motor i have drawn in the anterior root spinal nerve and anterior primary ramai i never mean that anterior primary ramai contains only motor and posterior primary ramai contains only sensory only anterior root and posterior root only difference anterior root contains motor posterior root contains sensory but spinal nerve is mixed spinal nerve is mixed which contains both sensory and motor that means some of the motor fibers they passes through the spinal nerve and they enters into posterior primary ramus some of the sensory fibers they may enter into anterior primary ramus but here to explain motor motor and sensory systems i have separated like this okay just remember this clear now now you know what is motor what is sensory how they are coming and how that information is interpreted how motor impulses will be executed and reach the target organ right okay till here this is and this one this is brain and this is spinal cord what is this this is cns 
this is CNS that means central nervous system and from here what is this PNS right of course this PNS divided into motor system and sensory system this is motor system that means this is motor system and this is sensory system right so here is a motor system and this is sensory system right sensory system again divides into general and special general and special if you take first special special and general right <coughs> sensations are why special because those sensations are arises by or those sensations are arised from the special organs okay they will not arise from all the organs which are present in our body but general sensations they will arise from almost all parts of the body right that's what sensory system again divides into special senses and general senses so special sensory system means the sensations which are arises from the special sense organs like vision we can see only with the eyes we cannot see with any part of the body is it so this is one of the special sense you can hear only with your ears you cannot hear with your hand right and smell olfaction you can smell only through the nose you cannot sense or you cannot smell with your head is it and taste also same you can taste only with the tongue you cannot taste with your hand or you cannot taste with your leg right so that's what these special sensations contain special organs right now general sensations this general sensations are general sensory system again we can divide into somatic and visceral somatic and visceral somatic means from the body wall from the body wall sensations which are exerted or which are arises from the body wall of course if you want to divide you can divide this one also into two parts what are those parts exterior septum exterior septum and proprioception exterior means exterior what is present exteriorly skin the sensations which are arising from the skin those are exterior sensations right like pain touch temperature these are exterior sensations clear and proprioception proprioception arises from the deeper parts of the body especially locomotor system locomotor system like position sense vibration sense joint sense these sensations are what we call proprioception what is proprioception just i will give one example position sense joint sense now i know are my brain aware of my position right i am in standing position right my left leg is fully extended and my right leg is slightly flexed that means my right knee is slightly flexed okay and my right hand is flexed at the elbow and my fingers of left hand are flexed because i am holding 
markers right so that sensations what we call proprioception proprioception and extraception i already told you skin receives different types of sensations like touch pain temperature those sensations are extraception clear then visceral sensations visceral sensation means visra also gives or the body parts which are present inside the body they are also gives sensation that sensations what we call visceral sensations just imagine peristaltic movements peristaltic movement sometimes you can feel the peristaltic movements which are uh, occurring in the abdomen okay sometimes you will uh, you can feel the distension of urinary bladder when fully filled with urine right those distension and actually visceral pain is dull pain but somatic pain is sharp pain clear so that is about sensory system should i repeat it one more time okay sensory system divides into special and general special means sensations which are arising from the special organs like nose tongue ear eyes okay and also equilibrium and balance also those sensations are special sensations general sensations generally those sensations will be arising from the most of the bodies that's what those are general sensations those general sensations are two types if they are arising from the body wall or other than organs other than internal organs those sensations what we call somatic sensations visceral sensations they are arising from the viscera these somatic sensations again we can divide into two type extraception the sensations which are arising from the skin introception or proprioception this proprioception arising from the mainly from the locomotor system organs which are in relation with the locomotor system then visceral sensations visceral sensations which are arising from the internal organs right then motor this motor also divides into somatic somatic and visceral okay this visceral we can also called as autonomic nervous system actually this is autonomic autonomic nervous system autonomic nervous system right see here this is autonomic nervous system these motor impulses pass through this autonomic nervous system and controls the viscera and gland that means mostly smooth muscles and glands but it is not under our control they are involuntary they are automatic right that's what this motor system what we call autonomic nervous system or autonomic motor system right but here somatic is it will be under our control just let me explain one example you can take food and you can eat this is motor okay somato motor that means that is under your control and after giving food digestion it is not under your control right otherwise just imagine you will look at very delicious food that information will go to the brain right motor impulses will come you can see that up to looking at that that is only your control right once that information reaches to the brain and it will process and it will send secretomotor secretomotor impulses to the salivary glands saliva will be produced right production of saliva is not under your control right it is under autonomic nervous system it is involuntary clear okay so 
this is somatic nervous system and this is autonomic nervous system somatic nervous system includes 31 pairs of spinal nerves and 12 pairs of cranial nerves 31 pairs of spinal nerves and 12 pairs of cranial nerves that is somatic nervous system then autonomic nervous system okay this autonomic nervous system here it is again divides into sympathetic nervous system and sympathetic sympathetic and parasympathetic parasympathetic right actually this autonomic nervous system i will take separate class but for completion sake i will explain very briefly about autonomic nervous system that means from where autonomic nerves will arise okay how they will reach us to the target organ and if sympathetic nervous system activates what will happen if parasympathetic nervous system stimulates what will happen that only i will explain at this session clear okay now let me draw one more section of spinal cord here okay so that it will be easy to understand the concept of sympathetic nervous system can i remove it okay i am keeping only autonomic nervous system now i will draw one more section of spinal cord here and i will try to explain about sympathetic nervous system here right see sympathetic nerves arises from the lateral horn cells of course the information which is coming from the brain it will runs downwards within the spinal cord actually it will be coming from the hypothalamus actually sympathetic nervous system the impulses mainly which will come from the hypothalamus that i will tell you later but at this session just you remember this information from the hypothalamus pass through the brain stem and spinal cord right and they will terminate the cells which are present in the lateral horns of lateral horns of thoracic 1 2 l 2 that means lumbar 2 that means only at that region only at that particular region that means from the t1 to l2 we can found one more extra horn this horn what we call lateral horn just now just imagine this is the section of thoracic segment of spinal cord clear so this information will be terminated in the lateral horn cells this information uh, this is also motor only is it or not like this motor this is somatic motor here this autonomic motor that means this sympathetic motor also will pass through the spinal cord and terminate in the lateral horn cells these are lateral horn cells now it has been terminated or it will be synaptic with this cells now the cells which are present in the lateral horn they receives this information and they enters into they enters into anterior root now this is anterior root then they passes through the anterior root right 
then they comes out they comes out from the spinal nerve they comes out from the spinal nerve here you can found ganglion this ganglion what we call sympathetic ganglions in the sympathetic ganglions neurons will be there so these sympathetic ganglionic cells which are present over here they takes this information they will this preganglionic fibers terminated preganglionic fibers terminated within the sympathetic ganglion after that these cells will takes that information and again enters into spinal nerve again enters into spinal nerve and they pass through the target organ just imagine this is smooth muscle fiber at this session clear now this is very simple let me explain one more time preganglionic fibers present in the lateral horn cells the processes of those cells pass through the anterior root and through the spinal nerve right on either side of the vertebrae you can found sympathetic chain sympathetic chain contains sympathetic ganglions these preganglionic fibers they terminate or they synapse with cells which are present in the sympathetic ganglion right when they comes out here is the root is there you say there is nerve root is there actually bundle of nerve fibers this what we call white ramus communicans white ramus communicans right i already told you post ganglionic fibers post ganglionic fibers arising from the ganglion again they are entering into again they are entering into where they are entering into spinal nerve again they are entering into spinal nerve as gray ramus communicans as gray ramus communicans they have entered clear but this is usually will happen but sometimes the nerve which is coming from the lateral horn it passes through the anterior root then it passes through the it passes through the ganglion but it will not terminate here but it will not synapse with cells which are present in this particular ganglion it may ascends up or it may descends down it may ascends up or it may descends down if it is descending down here somewhere another lower ganglion will be there no ganglion of this segment right so here it will synapse with cells which are present in this particular ganglion right that's what when you observe you can see the ganglions and those enlargements are connected by again nervous tissue that is this i hope you understood now right very simple usually preganglionic fibers pass through the nerve synapse with cells which are present in the sympathetic ganglion from there post ganglionic fibers arises again enters into nerve supplies to the target organs but in some situations some neurons pass through the root that means axons of those neurons pass through the nerve root enters into ganglion but within the ganglion they will not relate either they descends down or ascends up right once they ascends up these neurons will synapse here that means somewhere here there will be one more ganglion will be present right so they will synapse here 
if it descend down it will snaps here still more down also it can go and it can snaps in the lower ganglia right so this is one way and another way the cells which are present in the lateral horns those cell processes that means preganglionic fibers pass through the root anterior root and then they pass through the white ramus communicans they pass through the white ramus communicans and without relay without relay they go forwards they will not relay over there and they will terminate or they will synapse some ganglions which are present in front of the vertebrae like celiac ganglion like celiac ganglion post ganglionic fibers they arises from there and it will supply to the organ post ganglionic fibers arises from that ganglion and supply to the organs this is one uh, way of uh, supplying or one way of uh, conveying the sympathetic information right and one more chance is there one more chance that is nerve supply of or sympathetic nerve supply of medulla of adrenal gland these preganglionic fibers only these preganglionic fibers they go and supplies to the adrenal medulla this is adrenal medulla directly they will go on supplies to the adrenal medulla that means adrenal medulla doesn't have postganglionic fibers but morphologically cells which are present in the adrenal medulla themselves they are postganglionic sympathetic cells clear if sympathetic nervous system activates what will happen i will tell you in the next step but let me explain about parasympathetic nervous system structure parasympathetic nervous system it is cranio sacral outflow it is cranio sacral outflow cranio sacral outflow means some cranial nerves carries the secretomotor or parasympathetic fibers and some sacral nerves carries the parasympathetic fibers so we are calling parasympathetic nervous system as cranio sacral outflow cranio sacral outflow clear then actually this sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system they are balanced with each other right usually when we are in the resting position they are balanced condition but if we are in fear condition sympathetic nervous system go up and parasympathetic nervous system will go down why sympathetic nervous system come back for acute emergencies acute emergencies means if it is it we have to solve that problem at that particular situation okay otherwise it is threat to our life right that's what immediately we have to proceed or we have to do something to that situation right that's what sympathetic nervous system is diffused diffuse means throughout the body sympathetic nervous system will be activated but parasympathetic nervous system is not like that it will be discrete it will be isolated now if sympathetic nervous system activates what will happen that means there is very big tiger is there ready to attack you at the time some changes will occur in your body what are those we will see from above downwards first eyes pupils will be dilated why you have to see the situation and environment very cleanly or clearly that's what your pupils will be dilated then your face become pale why pale reduced blood supply 
Why reduce bread supply? Because of vasoconstriction. Because of vasoconstriction. Why vasoconstriction? Sympathetic nervous system is vasomotor. Vasomotor. So, constriction of blood vessels. Why this constriction of blood vessels throughout the body except muscle tissues? Because cardiac muscles has to pump more. Right? To give blood supply to the brain and also muscles. Right? And muscle tissues has to ready for either fight or flight from there. Either fight with the tiger or run from the that particular situation. Is it for that your muscle needs more blood supply? That's what in muscles vasodilatation. Remaining all parts will be vasoconstriction. So that will happen in the face. Face become pale and your mouth becomes dry because secretomotor fibers which are innervating the salivary glands are parasympathetic. So parasympathetic secretomotors are inhibited now. Right? Sympathetic nervous system is highly activated, sympathetic parasympathetic nervous system will be inhibited. So no secretions from the salivary glands. So your mouth become dry. Then come down heart. Heart rate will increase because heart is supplied by both sympathetic and parasympathetic. Sympathetic is cardio auxiliary. Parasympathetic is cardio inhibitory. Right? When your heart rate is increased, automatically your blood pressure will increase. Right? Then calm down. All the sphincters will be closed. All the sphincters will be closed and your muscle tissues will be ready for either fight or flight. Right? This is the situation if the sympathetic nervous system is activated. Then parasympathetic. Parasympathetic it is made for combat for the long term challenges or long term emergencies like digestion of food. There is no that much uh, urgency to digest whatever you eat and rest. When you are in the resting position parasympathetic nervous system is activated. Okay? When you are in the defecation and urination at the time parasympathetic nervous system right yeah that's what parasympathetic nervous system we can also call as nerve of joy nerve of joy during defecation during urination and during ejaculation also right parasympathetic nervous system in these activities usually individual feel happy that means joy that's what parasympathetic nervous system what we call nerve of joy so that is about divisions of nervous system and how the nerve impulses will go to the system the central nervous system and how they comes to the periphery right this is basic in the second part i will tell you what are the cells which are present in the central nervous system and also in the peripheral nervous system